Um, my talk is going to, first I'm going to show you a lot of pretty pictures, and then we're going to do some math. Okay? So first, let's start with the easy question. Who's, who's folded some origami? Okay. What's, what's a common thing that you might have folded? Crane. All right, good answer. I got a crane. All right, um, most of the pictures in here are stolen from the internet. Um, if they don't have credits, I don't remember where I got them. All right. So let's start with what. It, let's discuss what we mean by origami. What is origami for us today? Okay. So origami. First, let's talk about origami as art. So there's here's the prettiest pictures. All right. So. First, you can take a bunch of paper cranes and put them on a light bulb. That's kind of cool. All right, but let's do better. Okay. So, um, Robert Lang, this is a snake. Now, if you look carefully, there are scales. There are lots of scales. There are lots and lots of scales. I don't. I. He said that he's not going to fold this one again, unless you give him a lot of money. All right. It's a really cool snake, but it's. That's one hard. That's a hard one to do. Is that one piece of paper? That's one piece of paper. <laughs> it's one big piece of paper. <laughs> All right. So Robert Lang's an expert um, origami artist, and he also does the mathematics of origami. And um, we'll I'll talk a little bit more about some of the stuff that he does later. But let's just look at some more of the pretty stuff that he's done. Those are all. Um, pieces of paper, the connected ones are should be one piece of paper and the individuals should be individuals. Like these should be one piece of paper, the couple dancing should be one piece of paper. It does look better on the computer screen, but this is pretty good. Alright. Now with origami, a common thing to fold is bugs. Bugs because they have lots of legs. <laughs> the more legs, the more work you have to do, the harder it is. So this has got where well, you got you have, it was a bug, it's an insect, so it's got three legs. It's also got two things coming out here. It's also got the pincers, and if you notice at the top, those break into two things. So if I had to count, I'd say it was one, two, three, four, or there's a piece right here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and possibly the two wings. So between fourteen and sixteen things. There's in origami, there's these things called the bug wars. So you get a bunch of or, origami. Um, at a conference, they'll go to the local museum of natural history and try to find the most complicated bug to fold. Okay. Um, I told you he's an expert. Uh, I, I think it's one piece. It might be two, but either way, it's pretty cool. All right. That's one of my favorites. The flower is paper. The petals are all paper. The, the leaves are, but the petal is paper. One piece of paper. All right, more pe more flowers. All right, so now that's math, that's um, origami as art. So now let's talk about let's do mathematical origami. So this we're not gonna, we're not going to be doing mathematics of origami yet, but let's just do mathematical origami. What I mean by that is origami that does that makes things that are mathematical. So that's kind of mathematical. That's a bunch of intersecting um, thickened triangles. Um, I'm not nearly as good, but um, I have some mathematical origami. There are cubes here. Sorry. And if you've had calc 2, what would this shape be? Hyperbolic paraboloids. All right, so here's, pass those around and take a look. All right, um, for everything that I'm going to show that I've done, I have the directions and I'm going to give you them today. Okay, so um, we've got our three intersecting triangles, we've got our hyperbolic paraboloid, um, we've got our cubes, what else can we do? Oh, that's a pretty cool tessellation. Um, you know, you have a nice repeating pattern there, it's got little waves in it. Um, nice checkerboard. Well, not quite a checkerboard. It's uh, it's quite close. Um, you can, if you take that hyperbolic paraboloid and play with it a bit, you can make things like this, which is there's instead of just two, well, 
I guess two or four branches. Now there are um, three to six branches, depending on how you count. Um, this one's kind of cool. Um, it's, it's actually, it looks like on here it's actually made out of multiple pieces of paper. So I think the blue and the red are different pieces of paper, and it may actually be lots of pieces of paper. It may be similar to what we're going to do later today. Um, I like that one. It's, I think th those are hexagons that are all intersecting. So each hexagon is its own piece of paper. Uh, we got a cube that's got pinwheels on it. And that one's pretty hard. I'm going to show you how. I, I mean, I have directions to make a simplified version of that. <coughs> if you want to do the triple one, good luck. All right. So, and for what we've seen so far, these mathematical ones, and I mean, I say they're mathematical. They're not really math. They're, like, they're, they're something you can show off, but we're not actually doing any math yet. Right? They, they're, they're geometric shapes. They are mathematical, but... It's not what I would call really mathematics. So let's start getting into um, the mathematics of origami. All right, so I need three volunteers, okay? So who's gonna volunteer? You have to come up here, and I'm not gonna make a fool out of you. The next, you wanna volunteer for this one because the next one I am gonna make a fool out of you. All right, come on up. So here's the trick. All right, you have, you have three choices here. Which one? Oh, hold on a second. So, I've pre-folded this. If you notice, there's one straight black line across it. So, I'm going to hold on to this. Take the scissors. I want you to cut just across that black line. Well, but before you do, what do you think it's, what do you think's gonna happen? Okay, so you're not expecting. You just folded snowflakes before and cut out you know, little things and you unfold it and you get a nice snowflake. Anybody done that? All right, so this is kind of the same thing. Go ahead. Now take the, take the smaller piece and you're going to unfold it on the different one. Now unfold it so everyone can see. I hope it works. So what'd you get? I got a swan. You got a swan. All right. And if I open up this, what do I have? A negative of a swan. All right. You're done. You're, you're done. All right. I got two more. Who wants next? All right. Come on up. Which one do you want? All right. So we gotta get. We gotta take a vote. What do you think it is? What's a guess? Another swan? Okay, what else? A squirrel. A squirrel, okay. <laughs> Somebody's head. Somebody's head? Alright, go ahead and cut it. It's the scissors over there. Nope, they're over there. <laughs> and I have these for you, so you can actually fold them up. Which piece am I taking? You're taking the one on your right. Usually the smaller one is going to be the one you're looking for. No, oh, keep going. There's one more unfold. Okay. It's a fish. It's a fish. <laughs> it's an angel fish. Yeah, I thought it was Batman. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> All right. One more. Who wants it? Shoe go. All right. Two <laughs> hearts. All right. Two hearts. Where's the knife? Uh, right there. Tend to your fingers. Oh, this one? Yep. Right across. Okay. My eye works. <laughs> That's a picture. <laughs> Yep, it'll, it's okay. You want to cut all the way through. Keep 
Keep going. Keep going. Is that, there's what? There's the whole thing unfolds. What'd you get? Butterfly. Butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, if you can't already guess, this was not an accident. <laughs> this is actually, this, the, the origami required to fold this up is, is mathematical. We're not going to talk too much about it, but I'm going to show you what these look like. All right, so let's look at um, the fish. All right, so this is the folding pattern for the fish. You don't have to worry about what the dash and the dots mean yet. We'll talk about what that means later. But I want to, know, want to point out a few things. Well, first, the fish is symmetric about the horizontal here. So that first fold is a simplifying fold. Now, if you look at each of the places where these line, the fold lines, the dashed and the dotted lines, intersect the cut line, that's the black line, you'll notice something interesting. They're either perpendiculars or they're angle bisectors. So if you look right here, that's a, that dash dot line here is an angle bisector for the, for the end of the fin. This one right here, this dashed this dash line, that is a perpendicular to this side. The reason for this is that um, when you fold like this, you'll take the two, you'll take the black line on both sides to itself. If you fold perpendicular to an edge, then you can think of the two black lines are going to come together. If you fold at a at the bisector of an angle, then the two black lines are going to come together because the um, black lines are symmetric about the fold. So um, to actually design one of these, it requires some mathematics. If you want to design one yourself, I've read, I've read the paper where, you, where this is designed. This is actually, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the person who came up with this. Um, it's hard. It's hard to make it come out right. It's very easy to make a design that will require an infinite number of folds. Okay? I've, I've done designs that require an infinite number of folds. And it's not fun. All right, so let me tell you about where this comes from. So the, this is from uh, a mathematician, a computer scientist, whose name is uh, Eric Domain. All right, he's uh, a professor at MIT. He is one year older than me. He's a full professor at MIT. He's one year older than me. He has a MacArthur, which is a MacArthur Genius Award. Um, he completed his PhD when, he's tw when he was uh, 20. Um, and he's really, really down to earth and cool. What? What's this face for? Yep. Yeah. Um, and, but he's really cool. Um, he's fun to work with. I've worked with him. Um, I have a paper. Well, no. Uh, yeah. I have a paper with him, and yeah, he's the one that's more important than the paper. Um, he's this. Is, Eric. Eric is this guy right here. Um, his dad is right here. And that's Marty Domain. Um, he does last glowing at MIT. You want to look that up? Really cool stuff. Yeah. Is it still true that he held the position of artist in residence in the department? Marty, of electrical Marty engineering, right? yes, Marty. Artist holds, in residence in electrical engineering. So Eric's father holds the position of artist in residence. And they're both really cool down to people. Really busy. Really cool. Anyway, I see that. <laughs> um, so 